application security. Boo. Most developers and companies believe their applications to be secure and understand the importance of security. However, year after year, they continue to push vulnerable code into production. In order to avoid these pitfalls and improve the overall security of our applications, we need to understand what application security is all about. Application security is about taking steps to ensure that the software we're building and deploying are protected from dangers. It involves taking actions and procedures throughout the application lifecycle to ensure and prevent malicious actors from accessing data and our code through vulnerable software and hardware. In simple terms, this is like having smoke detectors to alert us of vulnerabilities found or issues within our code. We need digital locks to keep out bad actors from having access to our apps without permission. We need to implement measures like these to help ensure the security of our application. This will also enable us to capture alerts, prevent any types of dangers that are happening within our apps. Now, since every app is a bit different, these questions are not comprehensive. So you should consider more to help you identify additional ways your app could be used unintentionally and start securing there. But enough about the whys and whats. Let's dig into the hows of application security. There are six different types of application security. Authentication, authorization, data processing, encryption, logging, and testing. Six, like that. Let's start with authentication and authorization. Authentication is about identifying you within a system. An authorization is determining what permissions you're, or things you're allowed to do within that system. Using GitHub as an example, authentication is when you use your username, password, and or two-factor authentication to get to your account. Authorization is a set of controls that keeps you from getting access to, say, somebody else's repos that are private. These two things tend to happen simultaneously from a user's perspective, and so that's why they're often lumped together. After that, we get into data processing, which you can also think of as input handling. You need to make sure that when users are providing data into your system, they do so in a way that meets your expectations of what that data is supposed to be. As an example to illustrate this, Think of an email. When a user enters an email, you expect it to have a string like name, an et symbol, and then a domain like google.com or gmail.com. But you don't expect that to be something else. You don't expect that to be code and you need to make sure that somebody isn't trying to do that within that field. This is not only limited to users inputting data directly in your system. This could be data that's coming in from another system that you need to also validate. Think of them as like APIs and so forth. Next up, we have encryption, which can mean a lot of things. The simplest way I would describe it, and I might be oversimplifying things here, but it's about sealing and locking information such that you can't access it unless you have a key. So even if someone steals the data, they can't really do anything with it without the key. An example of this type of encryption is let's say you have data inside of a database and you want that data to be encrypted. You would use an encryption algorithm along with a specific key that would then transform that data into a format that's not human readable. Then in order to access that data, the only way you'll be able to do so is by decrypting it with the key. All right, next up is logging, which is an aspect of monitoring and if you're fancy, observability. Logging is a way to help detect and for research purposes, identify where there are security issues within your application. For example, logging information about what a user might be doing or attempting to do that's malicious in your app. So going back to our discussion before about data processing, when somebody's trying to input malicious data in an email field, let's say, you can log that. You can detect those failed attempts to enter an email as an example, which will help in identifying and blocking bad actors. You can even use that logging data to create automated alerts based on certain thresholds. Like when your IT department sends you a Slack message after your fifth failed login. And last but not least is testing. Now, typically to developers, testing consists of ensuring the functions and operations within your code are behaving as expected, but also to handle the unexpected scenarios too. But that's just one area of testing. In addition to that, there's security testing. An example of security testing is penetration testing, which involves having security researchers and experts attempt to break into your applications and systems on a periodic basis to ensure that it is still safeguarded. And that is a brief overview of how we can secure applications. This can feel cumbersome, tedious and overwhelming, especially if we're doing this manually. But this is where tools come into play to help simplify things for us. What are some tools that can help us secure our applications? Well, there are many out there, but we are going to focus on four different types of security tools. 
that is software composition analysis, static application security testing, dynamic application security testing, and interactive application security testing. Now I'm gonna dive into these deeper, but here's the quick summary of them. First, software composition analysis or SCA is about security scanning of your dependencies. Second, static application security testing or SAST is about security scanning of the code you write. Next is dynamic application security testing or DAST, which is about scanning your code while it's running. And last but not least is interactive application security testing, which is about scanning your code while it's running and users are using it. Let's start with software composition analysis, which is also known as origin analysis. This method analyzes all the software components and libraries you're pulling into your application that you didn't write yourself. Scott tools help you identify known vulnerabilities and notify you of any patches, config fixes, like disabling a feature or other remediation options. What does that mean in practical terms? It means if you're relying on open source libraries that you pull into your application, you need a SCA tool to actively monitor those libraries for vulnerabilities so you don't have to. Vulnerabilities are regularly disclosed and reported on in open source libraries. So you can either be constantly on the lookout for disclosures about all your known libraries, or you can use a SCA tool to handle it. As no two SCAs are the same, it's important to pick one that handles all the languages you use within your applications. It's updated regularly and provides recommended fixes for you. Some SCAs go even further, like Sneak Open Source, by adding automated fix capabilities right into your workflow. Up next is static application security testing, also known as white box testing, where you scan your source code at rest. SAST identifies weaknesses that may lead to a vulnerability and then either generate a report from the results or provide a fix in real time to the person writing the code. One example of a static application security testing tool is Sneak Code. This will analyze your application code as you write it, identify potential vulnerabilities, and provide suggested fixes right from within your IDE, interactive development environment. Then we have dynamic application security testing. Unlike static application security testing, this is done while the application is running. The testing is done without requiring in-depth knowledge of how the system works internally. DAS tools will analyze running code, identify issues with the requests and responses, any interfaces, scripts, injections, authentication, and sessions. It uses what's called fuzzing to perform the test. Last but not least is interactive application security testing. This is about combining static and dynamic testing approaches. They perform testing on application and data flow using predefined test cases. The tool may recommend additional test cases based on a result of this. So in closing, what did we learn? We learned what application security is, why application security is important, where we can go about securing our applications and how to do that. And last, we learned about some of the tools that are available, their purposes and examples of them. Thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a video.